Um, let's see. Make sure the recording is going. All right, awesome. No, it's having some window issues, but that's okay. All right, I think we have a great number of participants. I see people are still joining, but we are gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Charo Bell um, and welcome back to AI Summer. Um, for all of our VU grads, um, Vanderbilt has just finished up some commencement activities um, for our non-VU grads. If you're graduating or have family or friends that are graduating, congratulations, um, enjoy your summer and uh, I'm happy you're here with us for AI Summer. Um, if you don't know me quite yet, I'm Sharo Bell. I am a senior data scientist here at Vanderbilt's Data Science Institute. Um, I'm also a uh, assistant professor of the practice in computer science and the current director of the data science minor. I am also excited to be joined by my colleagues. I think you've met most of them already, but just in case, I'll go ahead and introduce. Um, you've already met Jesse Spencer-Smith. Um, he is the chief data scientist at the DSI and our interim director. Um, you've heard from him last week, an uh, introduction, a great overview about um, generative AI and AI more generally. Um, also, we're joined by Dr. Abby Pedulate, Miranda Shirk, and Umang Tadri, um, all data scientists and postdocs at the DSI. If you need help, these are the people to reach out to. So last week, Jesse uh, provided us with an amazing introduction to the history, the background, and behavior of LLMs. We talked about the scope of the technology that is encapsulated by the term AI, and also, if we want to call it the subgenre, um, if you if you will, of generative AI, which is mostly composed of LLMs. We also talked a little bit more about LLMs and how we can train them. We talked about how that mostly revolves around predicting the next token in one way or another, and how when we're predicting that next token, what we have is a probability distribution of all the possible tokens um, as an output. We also got into a conceptual overview of RAG, so retrieval augmented generation and how that works with LLMs. We talked a bit about how tools and functions are actually called. And also we had an intro in introduction to agents. This week, uh, we are going to talk about how we can programmatically implement your own LLM. So last week we had a great introduction conceptually about RAG tools agents. This week, we're gonna actually start programming them. So you may wonder to yourself like, why, why would I ever want to program one of these? Well, some people here probably have a good understanding of why that is. Um, generally, when we wanna program our own um, or access LLMs programmatically, it's because we have our own customized needs or things that we wanna do that exist outside of the platform where the um, functionality is introduced. So let's say, and we don't have to say because it is, ChatGPT. Um, ChatGPT has user interfaces. We love them. We love to use it. Gemini, um, Claude or Anthropics Claude, we love to use their user interfaces, but sometimes we want to do our own thing. Um, we want to create our own custom solution. We want to integrate that functionality into our uh, own products. We want to have um, differential implementations. We want to use our own data without uploading it directly, um, all of it to chat GPT or whatever have you. Um, a programmatic interface, so an API, an application prog uh, programming interface, that is going to help us to do that. Um, and so that's what we'll be talking about this week. And then in the upcoming weeks, you'll learn more about training models. So in this week, um, I am going to try really hard to balance breadth versus depth. Um, I want to make sure that you get a solid foundation, but you're also like aware of the other approaches that are out there or other things that you can do um, besides what we have talked about in class, you will see that there is homework and the homework is really essential for this. Um, we can talk about the things that we can talk about in class, but we only literally have two hours every day. And so I can't get through anything other, everything other, otherwise you would just be completely like overwhelmed. And it would be like listening to a YouTube um, recording on two or three or four X. So it would be crazy. So the homeworks are designed to get you a lot of depth 
whereas um, the in-class will kind of balance both of those things. Also the homework design so that you can come back to us the next session um, with questions, particularly during office hours. There's lots of exploration, lots of opportunity to discuss, uh, for discussion. And we really wanna be able to talk about that um, while you're here with us. For this week, you will also a thousand percent need an open AI API key. Like you will need this even today. So if you haven't already created one, you will need, you, while I'm talking, maybe even, um, you can go uh, reference the email that was sent and go create an account. Um, unless this is your first trial, um, you will need to likely put down funds. And so um, you'll probably need at least about $5 of spending money um, just to be able to kind of work with the API easily um, without having to like keep re-upping. And I actually think that's also the minimum amount. Um, one thing I wanna emphasize is that you will see me talk a lot about OpenAI and another platform called LangChain. Um, we will be using those uh, today in class, but they're not the only ones. It just so happens that both of these APIs are really well known very used frequency, uh, frequently have great um, communities, great documentation, developer friendly. And so although we're gonna use those today and this week to kind of explore some of the concepts of what RAG looks like, tools, agents, um, there are also a lot of other platforms that you can use and you can generalize the concepts that we talk about um, with those particular platforms to those other platforms. Um, what you'll see is like the details of the implementations will be different, but the overall concepts will be about the same. Again, we just have our little six hours to cover tons of material. So this time, like this week may be just a little bit less interactive and a more, maybe more uh, fire hose, um, if you will, take a little sip out of a, uh, a water fountain and you just get fire hosed instead that will be maybe a little bit more of the experience this week. But do always remember that there are five additional instructors here to help you. Um, make sure to put your questions in the chat. You can unmute if you want to. And you always, 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 always have the recorded video to go back to. And also, if you're having some coding problems, you have our chat LLMs to help you. The exciting thing about this week, another exciting thing about this week is that um, this week you will be walking away. So at the end of this week, you will have these programmatic implementations of basic LLM, RAG, all function calling tools, agents, all that great stuff. We will be using Google Colab for development, but in AI Summer, um, we don't generally cover how this works or how it's implemented on these full scale enterprise type solutions. But working together with AWS on May 23rd, next Thursday, you will have um, the opportunity to learn from an AWS solutions architect um, about how you can use Amazon Bedrock to implement similar solutions. So they're also presenting um, open source solutions. So essentially you can take what you learned this week, that code, it will look almost very similar to what they will present um, in the Amazon Bedrock uh, workshop. It's just that now we have this full um, scale enterprise solution so we can actually host our application. All right, so that was most certainly a mouthful, um, but before we start today, are there any questions that we can just begin with? Uh, hi, Shara, what labs will we be using? Is Are they on the GitHub? Are they the ones on the GitHub that we'll have to load up or on today. the Google? Yeah, today. Oh yes, they are on the GitHub. Um, okay. This could be like two underscore one for week two underscore day one. Okay. You'll point us in the right direction when the time comes? I definitely will. Okay. All right, then. Delightful. Well, let us then talk about this week. So this week, as promised, we're going to be talking about what we just said. Today, we will spend more time kind of easing you into programming on Google Colab if you're not familiar. Um, and also with something called completions APIs, which basically means that um, 
So it's a, I say that to say there's a difference from other types of APIs, which might be called assistant-based APIs. Um, we'll also introduce you to um, fundamentals of um, messaging with LLMs. On Wednesday, we'll get more into RAG, and Friday, we'll get more into tools and agents, although there will be a little bit of blending between Wednesday and Friday. Today, again, we're going to be focusing on these core programmatic aspects of messaging with LLMs. Um, when you think about conversations with LLMs, like it occurs in turns. So you say something, it says something, that's a turn. You say something, it says something, another turn. Um, we're going to talk about the structure of those conversations programmatically. Um, we will also talk about how we can leverage an API. This time it'll be OpenAI's API um, to get the behavior that we want out of LLMs um, as far as we're able to control that through the API. And also we will look at what actual applications look like um, if we have time. So for sure, we will try to get through the first two bullet points here. These aren't bullet points, but you get my point. Um, but the third one, we might you might need to do that um, for homework. It just depends how quickly we move. All right, we will come back to that page. Um, now, uh, let's actually just um, ease on over to ChatGPT. So first, we're actually going to start with a quick overview of ChatGPT so that we can remind ourselves what ChatGPT is. So one, when we look at ChatGPT, we see that we can say something to it. So we ourselves will write something here, upload something here. We might ask, what is a Python dictionary, for example? We, the user, have sent information to ChatGPT, and now ChatGPT is responding to us. We sent something called a user message, and now it's responding to us with something called either an assistant message, AI message, something indicating that it's not us. So we have already understood user message goes to ChatGPT's API, and then from that, we have an assistant response. A second element that we may or may not be aware of is if we go to down here, if you go to your account and you go to customize ChatGPT, you see some things that are called custom instructions. So one, there's an instruction regarding how we want ChatGPT or what we want ChatGPT to know about us to provide better responses. And there is another custom instructions, which is how would you like ChatGPT res to respond? What these two things are, are something called system messages. So programmatically, we tend to call them system messages and it's just like what it sounds like. It's the fundamental guiding behavior of your um, assistant so or your LLM. So essentially, um, whenever we put in a system message, that basically means, hey, we want you to do this particular thing. Usually you'll see like a default system message of you're a helpful assistant. When you see your helpful assistant, as a system message, you can understand what the behavior of that model will be. It will try to be a helpful assistant. So there we've just talked about three types of messages. A system message, which is guiding the overall behavior of that uh, messaging conversation. We have a user message, which is what we send to ChatGPT. And we have an AI message, what is, which is what is returned from ChatGPT. Although this is the user interface, okay, and real quick, I see that someone's raised their hand. Two hands. Hey, I just wanted to ask the custom instructions that you just showed, do those basically just go in as like context that goes in before we start the conversation? But like so they, the scenes? Yep. So they go along with the whole set of messages, which is such a good question. We will see that in just a moment. Really Thank good you. question. Thank you. Was there a second question? I had the same question, so. 
I'm excited. I am excited to hear you say that. So then let's look at how it behaves programmatically. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go to platform.openai.com. And when you're looking at the platform website, this is again, now the developer platform. So over where we just were, that's how we can like use their, use ChatGPT just generally. This is the website you want when you start to program. So the first thing that we're at, okay, number one, um, do make sure that you're signed in. So you need to have to see something down there. I'm actually gonna expand this. So this should be essentially you. And what we're gonna look at now is something called a playground. And a playground is just what it sounds like. It's a place where you can explore um, and play around with different parameters and what things, how things behave in regard to the usage of the API. So let me make sure anyone running at issues, everybody there. All right, things are looking good. This everyone, actually, I'm going to engage with the participants list. If you have a reaction, if you know where the reactions are um, on Zoom, go ahead and um, put up a green check. If you're here, everything's fine. You're logged in and you're able to access. Red X if you want maybe one of the co-instructors to come have a little chat. Just to clarify, you just want us to be on this page at the moment. Mr. Just want you to be on this page. Yep. All right. So now we know that that's working for mostly everyone. Um, all right. So now we're going to have our first exploration into the playground. So here you can see, this is the system meshes that we were talking about. There were questions about the system message. This is generally what, I mean, it's the guiding behavior. So here, uh, this is how we can interact with, or this will simulate um, how we interact with the API. These are some, some different parameters that you can use to modify the behavior of the chat uh, of the API call. So we have different options that we can pick. So we can choose different models, different temperatures. We can exper experiment with the API here and the behavior here without actually having to write a single line of code. However, when we get ready to write that single line of code, luckily uh, OpenAI's platform has us. And so here you can actually see the current state of our playground activities. So we'll get more into what this means, but essentially what you can see is that we have said, I mean, we've literally said nothing. Um, and so there's a role a user, which is blank because we've said nothing. You also don't see a system message here because this is like the default kind of behavior. It's not actually in there, but we can set it. And you can see all these values here included in the call. And so in the end, this is what the foundational interaction with ChatGPT's API looks like. So, Hi, Ch 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 how did you get to that that code again? Sorry. Oh, no problem. We can go up here. Oh, view, view, view code. Okay, I see it. Okay. And so yeah, that's- I got it. Okay, that, that's a really good question D throughout this exploration that we're doing. Um, make sure to click up there every once in a while and see what how the code has changed for that particular situation that you're in. So here we're actually going to add a system message. So now let's do, let's just use the you are a very helpful assistant and have brief, succinct message uh, responses. So now I know that uh, as we were using chat GPT just a second ago, it kind of said a lot for the question that I asked. Maybe what we want the guiding behavior to be is that we want it to be it, we want it to be a little bit uh, more succinct in its answer. So here you can see the change 
And you can see it, uh, how the system message is affecting the set of messages that we send to ChatGPT at any given time. So here, this would be, uh, you can see the system message, which is the, the first message. It's exactly what we wrote. And we're also going to send this user message. If we were to do this now, which we will do in a second, um, you would get like a response. Although we have actually said nothing, that's what these um, empty um, double quotes are for. So let's actually give this a try. <laughs> and this may be the moment where we need to pause. So here, system message here, we're not gonna enter any user message and just see what happens. And we can go ahead and just submit this. So this is like, actually sending this programmatic message that we had before um, to chat GPT through the API. So now if we look at this conversation, you can see that because the assistant has replied, we now have a new message that we would want to add into our conversation. So at any given time, when we are using the API, and we are trying to communicate with ChatGPT, Chat GPT, or we're just gonna call it the API for now. I'm not gonna say ChatGPT anymore. When we're trying to communicate with the OpenAI API. We send all the messages in the conversation every single time. So it's not like this follow-up situation where you send one message and then you send just a separate second message. If you want the conversation history and the entire conversation to be in, um, in context for that particular back and forth with the API, um, you send the entire conversation every single time with whatever additional parameters that you want. All right, so I do think that there is or was a question somewhere. All right, we're also just gonna pause really quick because sometimes when you click this button, it gives you messages that don't seem very nice. So uh, green check if you this was successful, red X unsuccessful. All right, that's so red X unsuccessful. Can you drop in the chat or maybe unmute about what the issue was? If it says something about the billing, that basically means uh, you need to come over here to settings and add some credit card information. Just got to whip it out. Amir. Yeah, um, just very quickly. Uh, I sometimes wonder if the capitalization of very, for instance, here matters. Do you know if, uh, I mean, it's a side note, but uh, does it matter if you capitalize or not? That is a really great question. And that is why we love the playground. We can try this out. Keeping in mind that this is actually the very beginning of this conversation. So, I mean, there's not much to go off of here, but we're gonna remove this message. But semantically, I wonder if the capitalization, because online when people capitalize, they mean something else. So with respect to the vector vector calculation, it would calculate something different. Um, so sorry, uh, yeah, <laughs> go uh, ahead. Jess Jesse, do you want to do you want to add to that? He's asking um, about whether the capitalization matters. It might, uh, because the tokenization is different. Um, depending on the tokenization scheme, can be uh, uh, different. So um, there's some weird cap uh, tokenization schemes that don't capture capitalization, but they're not really widely used. So the answer really is it could, because the tokenization is 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 different. Um, it does carry different meaning. We know that when we're writing, that capital letters, you know, uh, you know, uh, are like yelling. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it it should, but what difference will make? It really depends on the training of the model, but it could make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so what we can do is now that we have this, we can change um, the user message. So let's remove this one and we'll actually enter a user message here. So uh, what is a Python dictionary? We can view the code. We see that this is the entirety of the message that we're about to send to ChatGPT. Let's go ahead and send that. 
we can see that uh, the effect of the system message, which is that we're gonna be a little bit more concise in our answers. And so this allows you to play a little bit more with the behavior of the system, especially in changing your system messages. Also these parameters over on this side. So these are, um, you'll explore this a little bit more a little bit later in the class, but these uh, change like the responses of the model. So for example, if we're trying to determine things about randomness, um, it'll, you know, we can change the temperature, we can change how many tokens that it's going to return back to us um, and other things here. So again, on our next, uh, so this is the content of the entire API call, which is super exciting. Um, so really, if we were to copy and paste this into Google Colab, we probably would be able to get a result so long as we set up things correctly. And actually, that's what we are about to try out. All right, so a side note, um, as we are moving along, you will see me pretty much exclusively use GPT 3.5 Turbo. Um, you should take a look at the pricing. Um, actually, this playground here is very much a API playground, meaning that it is using your OpenAI API key as if you were programming. So right now it is charging you um, based on the length of the tokens that we're sending, the length of the tokens that are received, um, and also exactly which model is being used. Um, if you, there's a distinction, a very definite distinction between the pricing for 3.5 turbo and any GPT-4. So I'd suggest during the, um, as we go along in this particular class, maybe use 3.5, even though we might see that the performance is not exactly what we want to see. So we know that if we go and use GPT-4, we will probably get the response that we are actually looking for. Here, we'll just experiment with 3.5 Turbo for um, financial reasons. Someone said, how do we see if we're using 3.5? So it's this one. You can see if we click it, we can select lots of other models. And someone said, is the idea behind it? Uh, oh, someone said that it said something about billing. Again, you'll just have to kind of mosey on over here to settings and um, set up your billing. So essentially put in a, a credit card and prepay like five, $10 uh, and uh, So what was I saying? Yeah, so you need to prepay. Um, is the idea behind it that we can tune an API call by feeding data in context through the playground, then replay the first few exchanges before you send novel queries? I mean, that that is that sounds like a usage of the API, uh, the, of the playground. Um, you can also just um, use it to better understand any of the particular parameters or just straight up just write some code for you. So if you, yes, so I have also had an issue uh, putting in money and it still says that I reached a limit, comments, they're doing a great job addressing it. Essentially, you just need to wait a few minutes for it to propagate through the system. All right, uh, Tara. If we already have Jet GPT 4 plus, do you still think we should use 3.5? That is an interesting question. So it sounds like you're referencing uh, this. So this premium or this chat GPT plus subscription. Um, this subscription chat GPT plus is distinct from the API. So whenever you're thinking about the API, think that think like oh, there's a law company and they have decided that they're going to make this new LLM that does case law or whatever. That would be that billing for whoever is using that LLM through the API, that would be different than any individual user of ChatGPT plus, so this subscription. So this subscription, you have one kind of billing. This one, you have a different kind of billing. With the API, you have access to any of yeah, all the ChatGPT models. Great, thank you. That makes, okay. Yep. All right, awesome. So let's then 
try our hand at programming this in Google Colab, okay? So one last time, what we've seen is that there's a system message. There are these different kinds of messages. In fact, I'm just gonna add one more. We're gonna be billed for all these things, keeping in mind. So uh, uh, what is a key value pair? Oh, press enter, submit this. So you see after I submit this, and it usually is the case, I'm only submitting after a user message, then I receive back an assistant, assistant message. When we look at the code, anytime that we actually want to say anything to this model, we have to send the entirety of the conversation, not just individual messages back and forth. Okay, so let's try this out using Google Colab. And what we're gonna do is we are just going to go to the AI Summer um, repository. Oops, went too far. And I will send that out. All right, sorry, I'm gonna have to switch my windows up real quick. So I like to program on a, a different window than that one, which is so weird. I tell you what, programmers, we've got some quirks. All right. Now I'm gonna share a different screen. All righty here. So now that we are at the AI Summer repository, what you're looking at is a GitHub repository. So use this repo just generally. It has all and everything that you need um, for this course. It also has the recordings. Um, here at the top, this is where you see all of the code. And today we are going to start with this two underscore one programmatic LLM solutions. Again, this is GitHub. It it alone, the what like the part of it that we're looking at, it is literally for housing code, housing code, versioning code. You cannot actually run code on this. And so for that, we need to use Google Colab. So today we're going to be sitting in this two one programming L, programmatic LLM elements. What we can do is go ahead and open that up. Again, we have actually done nothing other than made it, made ourselves able to actually look at this notebook so we can look at it with our eyes, but all we can do is look at it with our eyes or if you're using a screen reader, look at it with your ears. So what we're going to do to actually be able to program is open this in Colab. And so Colab is an actual environment for coding. So we're gonna go ahead and open that in Colab. Let me open up back my chat. <laughs> All right. And so now we're in an actual coding environment. What we have is this Python system um, behind us with a, well, behind Google Colab, we have a Python kernel and we have a lot of packages. And what I mean by packages are um, some additional functionality provided to us through other APIs. So here, um, just a brief overview of what you're looking at. If you're unfamiliar with Google Colab, um, he, uh, this thing that looks like this, this is a markdown cell. Basically it has no impact on the actual code. These green things here are, they are code, but they don't actually do any execution. They're called comments. And so they're just there to help developers be able to figure out what is going on in this code. When you see this sort of gray backing and you see this little run thing, that basically means this is a real code cell. So whenever we click this little arrow, we actually run code. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just run this code. It's gonna take a second, so I'll talk while it's running. But essentially what this is doing, oh wait, actually before we do that, the first thing you might wanna do is copy this to drive. Because right now, if you start programming, you'll be unable to save it. You might wanna just start working in your own copy to be safe. So if you copy it to drive, it'll just create your own copy on your own Google Drive, which you'll be able to work with. It will be identical to this one um, to, to begin with. Um, 
but you'll actually be able to save it. So again, we're going to execute this first code cell. The way we can do this is to just click this arrow. We're gonna run this anyways. And what you're gonna see is that we are doing something called pip install. Pip install is basically saying, hey, there's a giant Python repository out there of all these different packages. Out of those packages, I want you to get me the OpenAI API, and I want you to get the Gradio API, and I want you to help download, I want you to download that essentially um, and install it so that I can use it in my code. So while this is running, I mean, you can see that it's downloading from PyPy, all that great stuff, preparing those things for you. Let's explore the actual user interface just a little bit more. So here um, on this sidebar, you can see many things. One, this is the table of contents. This is essentially what we will go over today. If you ever feel like you're a little bit lost, kind of unsure where we are in the sauce, um, we can you can just look over here to understand kind of where we're going, where we are. Uh, I also use this. This has nothing yet, but we'll come back to it. Um, the Python kernel basically has everything, all your variables that you create, all your functions that you create. Um, it has all of that available for usage, and you can see those things here. This is the thing that we are very, very, very interested in. This houses or allows us access to our OpenAI API keys or any other API key. So yours probably doesn't look like this. So I'm just gonna just go ahead and delete these. And while this is running, we're gonna go ahead and add our OpenAI API key. So as stated, you should have stored your OpenAI API key somewhere, anywhere. And so now we're going to leverage that, not anywhere, somewhere accessible to you that other people can't access. So what we're gonna do is leverage that and make it available in our Python kernel. So again, when we were just in the playground, OpenAI was grabbing our API key from its own system and using it because we were logged in. Here, we're on a se separate system, so we need to provide our API key. What we wanna call this is OpenAI API key. Well, it would be nice if we can explore it. So this is just the name. This is what we will call it when we're trying to reference it. And its value is actually going to be the value of the API key. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab mine. How did you get the key? Sorry, um, can you explain how you get the key? Uh, so um, in creating, uh, your so so in creating your OpenAI API key, uh, I can come back here. <laughs> um, I see. In creating this API key, it tells you what the API key value is, but at that point, you need to actually like save the API key. So if you need to create one like just now. Um, you can go to API keys, create new secret key. You probably want to create like this project key. And then you want to save it somewhere because after it shows it to you, like that's the last time you pretty much ever see it. All right, let me dig up my own API key. Oh, I just showed you the whole thing. I'll have to delete that later. It's okay. <laughs> ah, 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 luckily. So this is like a general password idea. Like this is like, this so is, what, uh, this has to be confidential basically, right? Yes. So remember that whenever you are using an API key, it allows you to programmatically access the resources of some service. So for us, we are programmatically accessing um, OpenAI and that access is linked to us. So me, Sharo Bell specifically, you, Amir specifically. So if someone else gains access to our API key, basically they're gonna go on GPT-4 and they're gonna like 
do all of these responses. They're going to do a lot of work and we're going to end up with like a $500 bill and we're not going to know why that happened because someone had our API key and so they're able to access the resources that we are able to access. That is such a good question. Thank you for asking it so that I could give that answer. Okay, so now that we have this API key, it is in here. Um, we see that we have, it looks like everything was successfully installed, which is always exciting. So what I'm gonna do, because I just, I just can't look at all this is, oh, that used to be an X. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. So I'm gonna hide this output. It used to be that you could only clear it, but now we have this functionality, very exciting. All right, so now that we've pip installed all that stuff, again, it's like going going to Amazon saying that, oh, I want the open AI dress and I want the Gradio shirt, send those to me. Amazon is gonna deliver those to your house. Now they're available for you for whatever you wanna use them for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some built-in packages. And so what I clicked just then, instead of this run is shift enter, shift enter, it ex executes the cell as you can see. Once the cell is executed, you see an execution number. Remember to execute cells. So I'm going to use this one. And then I'm also going to use, to execute this one, shift enter. So what this particular package does is it comes from Google Colab. You see here that whenever you wanna access your secret keys, um, you do this code. So we've done the first part of it, which is um, loading up this user data package. And now we're going to do a, a, uh, another part, which is we're gonna actually get that value and we're gonna store it into the Python environment because programmatically OpenAI's mm. API will look into your uh, Python environment to see if this key is in there. And so it makes it a lot easier than passing things back and forth. So shift enter, we're gonna run that. So right now it says, hey, you did not grant me access to be able to use this. Could you just go on and do that? We're gonna grant that access. Awesome. And then we are going to start coding. All right, was everyone able to get to this point? Green check. There's anything holding you up? You guys are doing a great job of using the chat. And I love actually how everyone sort of answers when you have an experience. That's so cool. I love to see it. I had a professor in high school who used to say, help your colleagues. You got to help your colleagues. And I love it. Love to see it. All right. So this is good. Things are looking good. All my tabs keep getting lost. If you have a question, if you're if, if there's some struggle, go ahead and just drop that in the chat. Or you can unmute and ask if you think it's if 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 you think other people may be running into it as well. I'm sorry, can I ask this? <laughs> um go ahead. so the key that you put in um seems to be necessary. And so Without the key, we can't get to this point. Is that correct? Yes. Without the API key, um, you cannot access OpenAI services. Yeah. Okay. Just so remember, um, one of the things they want to do is bill you. And how will they know who to bill without your API key? That's generally what I tend to think about, which is super weird. What do we put in? So one one more time. So let's look at this a little bit more. Oh, yep, that does. So what we want to do is we're going to name this OpenAI API key like this. And the value is the value of the API key. I'm going to show you this just a little bit. It should look kind of like this. I'll delete that later. You can't use it now, but I'll delete that one later. And then don't forget that you would have needed to execute these cells above to be able to successfully execute this cell. All right, so what we're gonna do, I shouldn't have closed this tab, but we're actually going to start programming 
but we're going to just like start a little bit from um, the API reference. So here we're going to go back to platform.openai.com. There are links here that you can click, but I'm not going to click them because they really love to navigate you away from Google Colab document and that drives me nuts. So here again, we have platform.openai.com. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go to the API reference. So in looking at documentation generally, you will always see just some overview of the documentation, how their platform is going to work, how the API is gonna work, a lot of examples, introductory material. But then you're going to get to the technical reference, which is going to usually be called like API reference. And what that means is that they're gonna tell you exactly how you can work with their functionality, what you need to call, how you need to call it, all that great stuff. So here you can see authentication, making requests, always lovely. They have other types of behaviors that we won't explore in class, but you should definitely do so. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the API for chat completions. So when it says endpoints, we're going to kind of think of that as APIs and we're going to go to the chat endpoint. So you remember how, when we created all that code in the playground, it seemed to say that we could do all of these different things. This API outlines all of the things that we can do, even the things that are not in the playground. So for example, no one saw logic bias, no one saw log probs, no one saw top log probs, nobody saw that. But it is in the API, although it's not available for usage in the playground. So this is the basic call of how you can use the completions API. Uh, again, why we are using OpenAI's API is because they have really great documentation. You can see there that there's an example here, which we are going to copy. So you're just gonna create this, you're just gonna click this button that looks like two separate things, which is copy. But some things to notice while you're doing that is that one, you can change the kind of model that you wanna use or you wanna see an example for. Also, Python, or also AI, uh, APIs, they exist in different languages as defined by that system. So here we have the Python API, but if you are better with Node, like feel, please feel free to use that, but not in, in this class um, outside. So here we're gonna use Python. Again, we're gonna copy this. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna mosey on over here and we're gonna paste. So this should look very familiar from what we saw in the playground. Uh, we always have to use um, like this open AI uh, uh, module that we need to import. And then we create a client. That client, we reference the completions API, specifically the create method of it. With that, we pass in these parameters. One of the parameters is the kind of model we want to use. The next parameter is, or another parameter is the messages, which is a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary is composed of a role. So who is sending the message and what that message it con contains. So the content. We have a list of messages because we have the system message, of course, but then we have a user message and afterwards we'll also have assistant messages. So let's go ahead and run this one. So here you can see that you just ran your first programmatic APA call, API call to the OpenAI API. Exciting. What we sent was um, this user message or the system message that you're a helpful assistant. And then we sent a user message, hello, and it replied to us what it said to us on the playground, essentially. Uh, Charo, can you explain the difference between system and user? 
in these two roles? Because it, it seems like you're saying both of them is something we we sent to ChatGPT. Yes. So we sent both both of them to ChatGPT, where we have the system message, which guides the behavior of the GPT generally. And then this is us talking to chat, ch talking through the API, sending our first message. So really, um, in oh, our chat, we I were see. chatting with OpenAI. We would we are with ChatGPT plus. We would have written hello, and then this thing completion. It contains the response, which we are now printing, and that message is from the assistant. So you can see role assistant here. The content is, hello, how can I help you today? All right, I see another question. From maybe teaching and learning? Oh, no. Nope. I lost you a while ago. How did you get to the screen? Like you went to the platform.ai and then on your screen, you had like a lot of things that my screen didn't have. So I feel like, is there a way to kind of go back two minutes and help us know where you are getting your information from on the platform part? Or never mind, I'll just try to listen. It's totally okay. Actually, I'm gonna walk through it just once more because there are lots of questions. So let's walk through it um, one more time. And what we're gonna do is we're going to start from the repository. So the repository is AI Summer. But from the repository, like, is that, we were already in the repository and we yes. went to Google Colab. Like, yes. Is that, are you restarting like all the way back there? Like where, yes. where how are you, how far are you restarting back to? Just We are, course. we are starting back from going to the repository all the way back from zero. Can you also include the key generation part in this explanation? Because I'm also. still failing to do that. Yeah. I gotcha. All Thanks. right. So actually, let's start with that that one. What we're going to do is we're going to go to platform.openai.com. So again, we love a developer platform. That's like our favorite thing. We love this documentation. And the way that they've implemented this, we have everything that we need on this website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the sidebar and we're gonna to go to API keys. So here we have one API key already and my colleague Umong. And now I'm gonna create another key. This is just gonna be called, I don't know, AI Summer key. We'll have it associated with this project and I'll give myself all the permissions. Now I'm gonna create this key. So here some of it is, you see that it says save your key. I'm not like, you're not gonna be able to see it again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy that key. I'm actually gonna save it somewhere real quick. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Just kidding, I'm gonna make it easier for myself. Well, maybe I won't save it because I am not accessing anything well. Sure. Oh, quick question. Uh, would you want to have uh, a, a break in just a little bit and then we can like a five minute bio break. And then during that time, also people can ask their questions about API keys so they don't uh, fall behind. Umang was going to offer to answer people's questions. I think that's a great question. Uh, a great point. I think we will do that. That sounds great. So here we have our API key. Now that we have this, what we're going to do, we just have this and we have it saved, saved somewhere. Okay, so we're excited about that. Wonderful. So separately, 
We're going to come back to the AI summer. As a side note, you can always use these solutions so that you don't have to copy paste anything. You don't have to write anything. You can just execute code. But we are going to open up this programmatic LLM elements. We know that GitHub is just something we can use for viewing. We need to use Colab for actual executing. So now that we're here, we know that we're going to use OpenAI's API. And so we're going to go to this key on the side. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a new secret. We have to name the secret. The secret, we're going to name it how we're, I mean, we're going to reference it. So we're going to call it OpenAI API underscore API underscore key. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we are going to paste the API key that we just saved in there. Now, once we click off of that, we're going to have the API key saved. If we click this notebook access. It's it's not letting you save it, I think, because it's got the same name. It said can't, can't save because it's the same name. Yep, that's exactly right. But fortunately, you all will not be in that position. So whenever you execute these steps, you will have your API key saved here. Oh, and I'm gonna just, all right. So let's see, um, before our break, I just wanna quickly just remind you, I'm gonna come back to AI Summer right quick. What you can do while we're programming, because what we will be doing together is live programming, as you just saw. If you fall behind, if you have, if you're just not wanting to write any code, you can go to this solutions notebook. What we're using is that other notebook, which is a workbook. This one right here has everything we're going to go through today. Everything is already filled out. There's nothing to add. There's nothing. I mean, you just run it. And so at any time, you can just switch on into this notebook. Your API key should already be available through Google Colab, and you'll be able to just go ahead and move completely forward. So when in doubt, solutions notebook. But always remember, you also have the videos as well. All right, I think we can maybe take a five minute break. Um, we can come back. Okay, actually we're gonna take a six minute break and we'll come back at 10.05. Um, during that time, what we're gonna do is if you're having any troubles with your API keys, um, we'll go ahead and get those worked out. All right, I will see you in five minutes. Oh, and I just closed something. And Cheryl, quick, uh, quick catch up. Um, the diffusion session, uh, I, I had misunderstood and thought that it was going to be at 1030 today, but is that really meant to be uh, like at the end of Friday session? Um, it definitely, I mean, it definitely can be. I definitely have material for like weeks. <laughs> so it can be on Friday. Okay, I will, I will email them now. Harper. So I'm trying to make an API key, but it says I need to verify my phone number and the verification process is taking forever. Hmm. I don't know that I've run into that one. I also don't know that I've verified a phone number. Um, is there any other mechanism for verification other than a phone number, like maybe an email address or something like that? No, it just says phone number. And I'll, and I'll put out a note there that it's possible that things are going to be delayed because OpenAI is going to be making a big announcement today that they're going to be powering Siri. Um, so they're going to have GPT-4 behind Siri. And so I'm betting that it's just going crazy with OpenAI and their websites right now. Mm -hmm. Can I echo Emily's request? So I was with you to where you got to there. 
And then you kept going before, and that's where I got really lost, was when we went back to like the playground type thing, but it wasn't a playground, it was the platform. So I have the API code, but then you, and I did all the collab stuff where we pressed the goes and all that stuff uploaded, but then I got lost next. So okay. there's anything. No problem. And I just uh, managed to close. <laughs> I just closed my Google Colab. So let me open it back up. No but um, And if you need to take a break, I totally get it. But just after, or if there's anybody who's staying on who could help with the, I think maybe Emily called it the secret section. So platform.openai.com. This yeah. is the entirety of their documentation. What we did is that we went to the API reference. So here, if you were to just like click through this, you'd be able to read like just, I mean, general stuff. That is super helpful. We will be reading that for homework, some of it at least. So this documentation page, super exciting. Love to see it. The API reference is very specifically a technical reference about how you interact with OpenAI's APIs. So what we did is we began looking at the API. The API that we're looking at is the chat completions API, which is here under endpoints. Oh, it's super helpful. Did we have to do anything with it or? So, or what's that? Did we have to do anything with it in the collab thing or? So what we did, and I actually will need to do it again because again, I just closed it. Um, so what we did is we recognized that the um, the API itself offers a superset of what we saw in the playground because there are a lot of values or a lot of parameters that we see here that were not in the playground. Mm -hmm. So there are some things yes. that we can only experiment with programmatically. And so to begin our exploration into the programmatic nature of these things, we went to... We looked at this code. This is why we like to say that OpenAI is very developer friendly because it's always got something for you to start with. And so what we can do is start with this one. So if we ever want to use OpenAI's code directly, we can just click on their little copy button. And what we are going to do is now that we've copied this code, we're gonna begin experimenting with that code. So we're gonna mosey right on back to Google Colab. And we're just going to insert our first code. So control V. And then we are going to run it. But I actually have to run all these things again. <laughs> so the code I saw was different from what you were seeing at the same uh, level. Like the code that I'm seeing is quite different. Hmm. So I definitely forgot that this is not the code that I used. Um, what I actually use is in the quick start. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you get this one. Mm -hmm. So I copied that. And now what I can do is paste that one instead. Super apologize. Can you show us the quick start where you found the quick start button again? So generally, um, like if you ever see me- the documentation, not the API reference. Yeah. If you ever see me referencing like anything that has code, there's a 99% chance for OpenAI. It's going to come from platform.openai.com somewhere. And so here it's definitely it, it, like it's the quick start. And then it's just a bunch of scrolling. So, oh, sorry. So I have um, my API key, but I can, I'm struggling with how to connect it to my, um, what's on Google Col Colab. I'm on number six in the steps. Um, if you can help me figure out what's going on with that. Um, Uman, would you be able to potentially help with that? Is that okay? Okay. Um, I'll just quickly open up a 
breakout room, which you oh can get into, and I then we can chat further there. That's okay. Great. And Lily. Yeah, I have a question about uh, Amplify. Do we have access uh, to the, their API or not? Um, what, something I, similar to what we do here. So, Amplify. So, actually, there's I think there's a developer somewhere in here that works with Amplify. But the way that you want to approach things like Amplify, it depends what you're really trying to do. But um, I think if you're interested in enterprise-like solutions, then your goal will be to attend the AWS session on May 23rd. Um, really? think, nice. okay. What's that? Nice, I already ingested. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, so coming right back along, jumping right on back in, everyone should be essentially at this step where we have copied from platform.open.ai, or sorry, yeah, where we have copied from this API reference, the chat we've copied here. And we have copied this actually directly into this cell. So we can run this. And again, we do that through shift enter, or we can click this button. We said to ourselves that whenever we send any single message to chat GPT through this functionality that we see, we send the model type among other things. And we also send a list of the entire content of the conversation. And so at this point, the entire content of the conversation is a system message guiding the user behavior and a user message, which is whatever we're trying to say to ChatGPT. All right, so after executing this code, because this is Python, what happens is this equal sign means that we store that result in this variable called completion. The reason that we see anything here printed out is because we have printed a component of completion. So now let's look at the rest of completion. The way that I'm gonna do this is that I'm just gonna open up a new code cell and I am just gonna type completion, shift enter. So what we know or what we have seen from the playground is that when we send a message to the OpenAI API, it will, the way it appears in the playground is if it sends us back one single string with one piece of information, which is the response, how can I assist you today? But programmatically, what we actually see is that this response, so this is what we sent. We stored the response in this variable completion. Now we're looking at completion. What we actually see is there is a ton of information returned to us from chat GPT. So this is a little bit hard to look at. So what we're gonna do instead is we are going to just, uh, we're gonna use some functionality associated with this chat completion structure. So this is Python stuff. It's basically saying, hey, I have all this functionality. I'm gonna put it all together and I'm gonna call it chat completion because I need certain functionality associated with this behavior. So we are going to do this thing called model dump, and it's gonna allow us to look at this a little bit better. It was just hard to look at like that, just couldn't do it. I'm gonna make that just a tad bit bigger. So now we can see all the content of a response from chat GPT. What we see is that there's some ID, we can make use of that, maybe or not. We have this thing that's called choices, which is a list. What we have here re returned to us is a one element list. And the element is a big old giant dictionary. And the dictionary contents are some information that we might find important. So here, this, and you can read more about this in the API, this is information about why ChatGPT or the API stopped 
it, or, or ended its its statement, um, the particular choice, blah, blah, blah. But what we care about the most now is the message that it responded to us with. So rolling back, the completion is a big old giant dictionary-ish thing. It has this thing that call, is called choices. Choices can, is a list. So this particular element is the zeroth element. So completion.choices at zero. What we want is the message. So we get that. And what we want is the content of that message, which will return this. So if we want the actual string response, we actually will need to write this entire statement here that you see, completion, the name of the variable of the response, dot choices at zero, choices, this uh, particular element of our, our response, the response choice, the message of that choice and the content of that message. So we will print that. And then just for convenience in terms of moving forward, what we'll do is we'll save that specific string from the assistant. We see again, the role assistant. We'll save that particular string of the role assistant into this variable called completion one. And actually I am going to modify, sorry, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. I'm gonna modify this cell just a little bit before running it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type completion underscore one. And basically what that does is it causes Python to output the content of completion one. So what we will see is the printed string, and then we will see the contents of completion one when we run this. And delightfully, what we see is the printed version, what we expected. And since we are using completion one and we are outputting it, what we see is the contents of that, which is a string of, hello, how can I assist you today? All right, my windows keep closing. All right, delightful. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to update the conversation that we just had with ChatGPT um, with more information. Um, oh, sorry, well, we're, we're gonna update the conversation that we just had with the response that we just got from ChatGPT. Now, in this particular moment, there was a mistake that I just made, which is I used the wrong um, example code on accident, sorry about that. But what we had, but this is meant to mirror the code that we had before. So if you want to, maybe what would make it easier is what we can do is copy this whole thing. Control C, just gonna copy it. Command C, I'm gonna come back up here and we will try it again. So I'm going to actually, can I do that? No, actually, let's not do that. We're just gonna move forward. So right now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna assume this is the conversation that we actually had before that we had, instead of your helpful assistant, we were making a poetic assistant that is skilled in explaining complex programming uh, concepts. And we're gonna pretend like what we just said is compose a poem that explains the concept of recursion in programming. We're gonna just pretend that for right now. Sorry, sorry about that. So then what we can do is we can update the conversation because before we just had the user statement and what we need to do is add what the assistant just said. The way that we do that is we just add another element to the list. We saw that in the playground. We might've sent these two things but ChatGPT responded back to us or the API responded back to us. And now when we want to send another message from the user, we first have to add the message from the assistant. We have the message from the assistant because we have saved it in completion one. So then what do we need to add? As you saw here, I just added this comma because we need to add commas between elements of lists. And we are going to add a dictionary where we're gonna specify the role. 
the role here is the assistant. And the content of that information or the content of that message is going to be, to be what was just returned to us in our previous turn of conversation. So we're going to just use completion one and we're gonna paste that there because this is the variable that, uh, that, uh, that contains this string. You're gonna see again that there's a little bit of a different response because we're using a different like starting point. Again, sorry about that. I don't know how I used the wrong um, initial, initial prompt, but we're gonna, we're gonna move forward. So here is the message from the assistant, but now we need to send a message back. So as the user, we're gonna add what we're gonna say. Oop. So I'm gonna use that in double quotes for consistency. Oh, sorry, that should be role. I don't know what I was writing. So for the role, we have the user and for the content, you can, um, I don't know, make something up. So let's see, what are we gonna say? Um, we'll just follow up on this conversation that was previously had where we asked about the concept of recursion. We're just gonna tell it, you didn't tell me anything about recursion. So now what we have is an updated conversation. You can see again, we just added messages to the list. And what you also see is that we have an any single, any single request that we send to OpenAI's API. Again, we have the entirety of the content of the conversation in that message. We don't just send one single message if we're trying to continue a conversation. So here, we're just gonna run this. You see that it executed, but you don't see any response. Why is that? That's because we sent this request to the API, we stored it in completion, but we never printed anything out, which is completely fine. Above, you would have seen that we printed something out and that's why we were able to see something, but still we have the response from ChatGPT here. So now let's look at the response. Okay, so now we see the response from the API. Now it sends us a really, really, really nice poem because we have a different system message and we asked it originally actually to compose a poem. All right, so now what we need to do is continue the conversation, right? So we're gonna practice continuing this conversation but what we need to do is just remember how we can get the text out of this particular uh, structure because it's a pretty complex structure. So again, what we can do is we will create a new variable. We can call this completion two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take completion we are going to get the choices property out of it. We see that choices is a list with one element. So we need to get that element out. That element index is zero because it's the first element. From that, what we want is the message out of this structure. So we're gonna get the message. And from that message, we want specifically the content, which is here. And then this will be completion two. So here we can see in our multi-turn conversation, our first completion 
we added there to continue the conversation. Now we will add the second turn. So I think we can do this together. Um, what we're gonna do is see what it's like to continue the conversation even further because we just got another response from ChatGPT. So here, this was our system message that we had to begin with and our user message is the first thing that we sent. This is how the assistant responded. Now what we can do is add our, I, add our previous message, which is you didn't tell me anything about recursion. We'll add that there. Sorry, that's just a difference caused by the fact that I started with the wrong prompt. Sorry again about that. So again, our content here is you didn't tell us anything about a recursion because that was what we actually sent to ChatGPT a second ago. And now we're going to add the response that it just gave us here. So how do we do that? Just one more time. The message that it just sent us is from the assistant. The content of that message we just stored as completion two. Then we need to add our next statement. So our next statement has the role user and we need to add our content. So maybe something that is based on what we just said to prove to ourselves that ChatGPT has the conversation history. So maybe we can do is make it based on something that was in here, which is this nice, beautiful response about recursion. Maybe what we can say is make this a haiku instead. So if it was the case that the model had no history, it would have no idea what this was. But if we see that the model responds in a meaningful way based on the content of our conversation, we'll know that the whole chat history is being taken into account and put into context whenever.